So <clears throat> continuing from my last video in getting this Magnavox television chassis on my bench, I've cleaned it up a little bit, uh, not thoroughly, there's a little dust in, in places, but I tested all of the tubes in it and these tubes had to be replaced. They were very weak. Uh, this one is the high voltage rectifier, that one was I think for all practical purposes dead. But all the other, I replaced them with uh, tubes I had out of my stash. These two 5U4s are, are fine, they're, they're absolutely fine. Um, I haven't done much other checking. These, these look like uh, can ohm resistors, but they really aren't. They're some other kind of resistor. So I'm going to have to check those, those resistors and see uh, if they're open or not. But I have a real problem here. I cannot find a SAMS folder for this very chassis. I can't find it. The one that I got is close. But the problem is, is that one has the power transformer and one 5U4 rectifier mounted on the chassis instead of cabled up from this because it's a table model uh, television. And the tube complement is, is slightly different. Uh, like for example, this is a 6V6. I think that's a video output on this set. But the video output uh, on the, the SAMS folder I have is, is different. So I'm going to have to see if I can hunt down and, and get a closer uh, match to this set. And I, I can't find it anywhere. I can't find a complete SAMS folder for uh, the, the embassy console. I can't find that at all. So I think before I go any further, I'm going to have to do some research and see if I can find the correct uh, uh, SAMS folder for this particular chassis. So I have to do some research. The reason I acquired the Magnavox Embassy was because, for one thing, it's beautifully built, I think. It's also very rare. And now that I say that it's very rare, I cannot find a service manual or a SAMS folder that covers the embassy as a unit. At least I haven't been able to find one yet. Now here I've got two Magnavox television SAMS folders. And uh, this is 49, this is 1950. And the embassy was built in 1950. This one comes closest to this television because it has a 12 LP4 tube in it, whereas the 49 version has a 10 BP4. A 10 inch tube. This is a 12 inch. And it has uh, some of the tube complements in the chassis come close. The difference between this and this actual chassis is on this set because it's a tabletop set. The power supply is, is contained right in the television chassis. Power transformer is located here with one 5U4 rectifier. But in this particular case, here is the power supply with two 5U4 rectifiers in it. The cables in, plugs into here where on this set the power transformer would go. And the tube complement is closer on this folder, this 1950 folder, but not exactly. So I guess I'm going to have to just stumble through without having the original service. And if, if any of you viewers, I, I don't have many viewers, I know that. But if anyone caught the fact that I had to saw that piece of wood out of the console to get this set out, the chassis out, leaving the CRT intact, I think they, I would have mentioned even in that video that what I really needed was the service manual for the embassy, the entire unit, which would explain to the serviceman the proper way to take this out. And I know that it's to take the CRT out the front first and this out the back. That's the only way that could have been done. I, of course, modified that by sawing that piece of wood. 
Anyhow, I'm going to continue on with this uh, with the service uh, information I do have. Here's the inside of the high voltage cage. These are not hand ohm resistors. They, they, they may look like it, but they aren't. They're wire wound resistors and they're just simply uh, ceramic and clamped down with this band that holds them down to the chassis. And all of them are good. I've checked. There's three of them. Here's one in two sections. This one is in two sections. This one is one section. But they all test good, which <laughs> makes me very happy. And unfortunately, my service manual does not show this resistor here. It's different enough to where can I rely on it? I don't think I can rely on it completely, but I'm going to have to really kind of just wing it in a lot of parts when I start working on this set. But everything in, in here is good. The flyback looks very good. All of the tubes check good. I've got I've got to move this wire. This is the, the cap for the horizontal output tube. When I first power it up, I'm going to have that disconnected. I, I didn't check the fuse in here. I'm sure it's good. There's a spare fuse right here. The Magnavox put a spare in, there, in, in, in all of their chassis like this, but I'll check this fuse. But so far, I, everything in the high voltage cage seems to be pretty uh, uh, good or as it should be. I'm not sure about the horizontal damper. That's, of course, a rectifier tube. Uh, it tests excellent, but the filament looks kind of funny on top. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is with that, but I'll leave it in there for now. And here is the underside of the chassis. Here we have the horizontal oscillator coil, very much like the Admiral I worked on. Here's the vertical output transformer. This is an audio transformer here, I believe. Maybe not. Uh, no. That's a choke. That's definitely a choke. It's not the. This thing plugs in. Um, it sends audio out to the power amplifier, so uh, it doesn't. This does not actually have uh, the typical audio output that, say, the desktop version of this set has. Uh, it's got a cable going out that plugs into the radio. When you put it on TV, it switches that into the power amplifier. Now here are all the electro, the big electrolytics, and the thing that's noteworthy to point out is they are not gr typically grounded. Although this one is here, here it's grounded, but these others appear to be isolated from ground, so I have to look at the schematic. I, I would imagine that there's a negative voltage presence in this set. But all I'm going to do is just check for shorts and opens before I do a, a slow power up. Now a lot of this circuitry looks the same as laid out on the uh, SAMS folder except for the fact that of course see this transformer here is not here but it shows uh, C1, 2, th 3 and 4 and here we have C1, 2, 3 and 4 and I'm checking it for example this one I think is 303010 according to the uh, parts list but look at how high it's reading when I have uh, the meter on it. Uh, that's very strange. Of course I have to look at the schematic and see if it's in parallel with any other capacitors but what I'm mainly doing right now is I want to verify if I can run this up very slowly without any of these capacitors actually venting out. That's, that's my main interest. So here's what I found so far. What I'm actually trying to do right now is to determine whether or not the focus coil is open. Because if that coil's open, 
I, I I'm stopped right there because unless they find a replacement I don't have and there's no evidence to show that it's open but I'm trying to find it and and because I have the wrong Sam's folder and I can't seem to find the right one for this chassis uh, I'm having a heck of a time because the, the focus control is or the focus coil ends up on this plug right here and I'm trying to trace it through but here's what I know so far this is a, a coarse focus adjustment it's a wafer switch uh, this is supposed to be a hundred ohm resistor it's gone more than a hundred ohms high about 150 ohms too high that that obviously has to be replaced but this is the coarse fo focus control but on this manual this is supposed to be the wire wound focus control on the back there's no on, uh, but this one is a coarse focus control and here is the wire wound focus control so <laughs> um, I'm still trying to hunt to find out where actually on this plug uh, without having to take this all apart where the wires actually go for the, the focus coil because that's important I need to know if that's open or, or if it's uh, good Okay, the best I can determine is the focus coil is between these two pins on this plug. And it appears that it's, it's not open, it's okay. Uh, this big 10 watt wire wound resistor here is in the circuit. But the problem is, is on my, my service uh, information, my particular uh, SAMS folder, this resistor is not even even shown in it at all um, it's I'm not sure what the value I think it's either 700 ohms or 11 11,000 ohms I'm not really sure but the bottom line is it, it's printed on the front but I uh, the 11 is kind of faded it's the 700 ohms or 11,700 ohms I, I can't figure that out I'll, I could desolder it does it measures low I could desider one end and measure it to make sure the resistor is at least still a resistor. But at this point, I, I think I'm dead in the water. I, I've got to get the right service information for this chassis, and I don't know where I'll ever find that. Uh, it's not listed in the SAMS catalog. Uh, I think I'd have to try to find an OEM uh, uh, service manual for the Magnavox Embassy. And on eBay, so far I haven't found it. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever find one. Um, uh, I, I, I am really, really at a loss. Um, but I, I do have to get the right service information for this. this is, I, I don't even want to do a, a slow power up on it until I know more about how this thing is wired by looking at the right schematic. So I've abort, aborted my plan to do a, a, a slow power up of this set to see what it does because I don't have the right service information for it. Now one thing I did notice is this fuse in the, in the horizontal circuit in the, uh, is open and uh, I, I don't know why that would have happened. I'm assuming I noticed that the uh, high voltage rectifier was uh, was shot and I put a new one in but uh, uh, I'm not sure what it w what would have taken that fuse out the horizontal output tube test just fine I'll have to I'll have to see what happens but I, I before I try anything on this I want to get the right service information so I know where everything is wired. <clears throat> well when I made the last clip I thought that was gonna I was gonna just uh, put a shout out somewhere to see if I can find a more accurate service manual schematic for this chassis but it was out earlier before now a little earlier to the horse farm to feed the horses and what was going through my mind was <clears throat> the fuse it's open this fuse is open 
Now, of course, that shuts down the, the high voltage. Now, what I found in here was that the high voltage rectifier, the 1B3 way back in there, right back in there, was dead. I put another one in. There's, I, I've got a good one. The horizontal output tube right here, test fine. Here's the horizontal oscillator, part of the 6SN7 tube here. That's fine. But here is the damper tube. Now, if you, I don't know if it's going to show, but the filament looks funny. It's it's like kind of partially out of the the container it's in. But more importantly, this is a 5W4 damper tube. Let's see. I think it's right on the top. Let me, let me look at it. I'm, I, I'm sorry, I missaid that. This is a 6W4. And the damper tube that's supposed to go in there is a 5V4. Not a... Not a 6W4. And if I look at in the uh, tube substitution handbook, uh, a 6W4 is not a substitute for a 5V4. So someone <clears throat> plugged this tube in and it's, it's not the right tube. It also looks like, I don't understand why the filament looks so funny on the top. This tube, by the way, tested just fine. And when I tested it, I never thought about it, uh, that, that it was the wrong tube, until I started looking into the set a little bit further. And what really started me on that was noting that the fuse to the high voltage section is blown. Now, if you could see the... The transformer in there, the uh, the high voltage transformer, the flyback transformer, looks just fine. It could be shorted, but it appears to be just fine. So what could have blown that fuse? I'm kind of thinking that maybe the 1B3, when it when it went, usually when a 1B3 uh, high voltage rectifier tube goes. The filament opens is what happens in those. It's, that's that's what blows a one volt filament. But it could have blown open and maybe momentarily shorted enough, just enough to blow that fuse. I don't know. I won't know that. But uh, anyways, I do have to look for a 5V4 tube or a substitute to it to plug back in here and not this uh, 6W4 horizontal damper tube that doesn't belong in that uh, circuit. And so, here is my replacement 5V4. This is a new old stock tube I bought from an eBay seller. Brand new tube. 5V4, which is the right tube to go in for the damper. I'm uh, thinking that that wrong damper, the 6W4, that filament that, that's sticking out of the top, I think maybe there was an arc or short or something in that tube. And uh, between either the 1B3 or that uh, 6W4 is what blew the, the high voltage tube, or fuse, I'm sorry. But uh, at, at any event, I'm going to conclude this part 10 video with this. Uh, I'm going to recap this replace all the out-of-spec out of resistors and put all new capacitors in it. I won't show that on a video. Um, I, the next video is going to be when I've got that all done and I'm, I'm starting to test the set with the new capacitors and new uh, all the replacement parts of the tubes I replaced that were bad. And I'll see if I can get it to work from there, but I'm not going to try to power this up like I did with my Admiral and just uh, get it working from there. I'm going to recap the entire thing first. 
So my next video will be whenever I get that done.